Our Edmondson, not the least of which is Father Worcester, a wonderful mother, homemaker, cook, and hostess. The tables you set for Shabbat and Yontif are elegant. The dishes that you prepare are visually appealing. From chicken soup and matzo balls to brisket and chicken, your famous chulant and all oh, those delicious salads. Everything has such tongue, such taste. I have thought about what it is that makes your dishes so tasty and special. And I realize that you use, in very liberal amounts, three ingredients not found on the supermarket shelves or in any recipe book. They are love, kindness, and generosity. Etty, if you were ever to decide to publish your own recipe book, kosher by design will be no longer the number one bestseller. <laughs> I would like to share with you something my mother would always say to me when I showed her a new recipe or a different way of preparing a dish. You know, she would say, looking at me, the hen can learn from the chicken. This hen has learned a lot from you. Thank you, dear Etty. May Hashem bless you with many, many more years of being our Balabusta extraordinaire. is Wendy Sharon. <laughs> it is my honor to speak to you tonight. Of all the different roles that Etty plays in our community, the one that I see the most is her role as a mother. As a mother of three boys, I am fortunate to stay at home with them. Sometimes, or more honestly, a lot of the times, it is very overwhelming. Just this morning, my oldest son Joshua and I had a conversation after an incident this weekend of him stepping all over belongings in the car and after several warnings me raising my voice. He said to me that Etsy never raises her voice. <laughs> so I called Etsy to ask her how she's able to do this. But happily, she told me what she expects of them in what, she, in what they will expect of her in the point system they use, with consistency being the key. I can't wait to implement, uh, to implement this. <laughs> I am always in awe of how Etty, with three young children and an infant, effortlessly does it all. Mother, wife, Reviton, teacher, leader, friend, the list goes on. When Rabbi and Etty first moved to Naples, Mendo was about five months old and I was pregnant with my second son. I remember the first night I met them, they had invited me to Shabbat dinner at their rented home on Park Shore. Not knowing how to act around an Orthodox rabbi and his wife, I begged my friend Kim Jaffe to come with me, since my husband was out of town. It didn't take me long to warm up to such a friendly couple and loving mom as she played with Mendel and talked to me about the baby on the way. As time went by and they settled into their new home, Yitzi came along and Mendel started school with my sons Joshua and Jake. I was always amazed at how Etty was able to look so put together at the bus stop first thing in the morning while I was still in my sweat and uncombed hair. Over the next few years, with the help of a generous donation of a school bus, we were able to send Mendel, Yitzi, Josh, and Jake to Hebrew School in Fort Myers. Even with the drive, maybe even longer during season, Etty was always there for every teacher conference, performance, and science fair, supporting her voice along with baby Hira. As good as things sometimes come to an end in our little school bus that had its last day. A couple of months before school year ends, Etty, along with Haya Mushka, drove the boys to school every morning. Devoted mom as she is, Etty and Haya drove the boys every morning for most of the next school year looking put together in beautiful at 8 a.m. <laughs> this, this school year, Etty and I decided to keep the boys here in Naples to be closer to us and started our Jewish day school from scratch. Etty organized and is responsible for Hebrew teachers who spend the entire day with the boys, along with helping her with Shabbat children's services, 
Sunday evening school, and other exciting programs. As our school year started, Rabbi and Effie welcomed the newest addition to their family, Kenda. Effie was telling me how now they have a boys' crew and a girls' crew in the family. I can't wait to have the girls' crew join our growing school. I have enjoyed being able to share with you my thoughts and experiences for Effie. Thank you. Our next speaker is Lori Newmark. but I actually met Etsy a year ago from the Camp on Izzy when we had to go and check it out and see if that was something we'd be interested in doing. Little did I know, one year later, I'd be in your kitchen. <laughs> this summer, I had the privilege of cooking in Etsy's kitchen for an entire month, every single day, five days a week. Not only with me for the family, but for the 12 counselors that came as residents to live. Through this experience, I had a life-changing experience. It was amazing. What was so great about this was watching the love that she gave, not only to her own family, but to the 12 counselors who she became a surrogate mother to. Watching her, no matter what was going on, she was able to manage it all. It was easy and loving and happy and beautiful, and her home was calm. And there were lots of kids running around, but she was calm in the midst of all of it. I was so blown away by being in this home with more than love. It was peaceful, it was joyous, everything was so exciting. Now I'm gonna give you a day in the life of our camp counselor, Ezra. Up at 6.30 a.m., filling Haya with love and hugs and as much as she could give her, knowing that she was going to be leaving in a few hours. Gets the boys dressed for camp. Of course, always looks impeccable as well. That's what he said. Up early, getting the counselors in order, speaking to them, getting the details of the day going. Classes are underway, and then she supervises the kosher kitchen. Of course, they have to cook all the kosher food in Etsy's home. So while she's running camp, she's also running a home cook meal, which is going on. And then we have somebody, but she organizes it all, someone to go pick up all the food and bring it to the camp. Once that's ready, she then contacts me and says, make sure you have all the supplies. I had to have all the supplies because now I had to prepare kosher meals for not only the whole family, but now all the council. When she comes home at 3.30, though, it's a whole nother world. Because now, after being camp all day, with the children, running everything, she comes home to her own family. Now she's home. Kids are jumping all over her, and they're just so happy. Kisses and love. Honey, darling, it's just so wonderful. It's, you're blown away by the beautiful love that's just there. I'm thinking, my kids come home. And there's chaos, and I'm yelling, and there's craziness, and what is going on here? There's something here that I'm missing. And I watch her do it, and I'm just, okay. So there's definitely something I gotta tap into here. So meanwhile, now the counselors start tracing in. All the counselors, and they're teenagers, and they do their thing, and they're hungry, and she prepares food. And depending, of course, what we're going to have for dinner is depending on what kind of lunch they're gonna have. Because if the dinner is, of course, we cannot have certain lunch, snacks, so everything is orchestrated so beautifully. And this is when I learned, of course, about kosher cooking. Now, while the girls are all stomping in, we decide, oh, we, she has to supervise. How did your day go? How did the kids go? Do we have permission slips? Am I dressed? What are they going to bring? Make sure they get their flip-flops. They go into the beach tomorrow. Do the parents know they need towels? Everything goes on and on and on. After this, there's a really powerful counselor's meeting where they all sit down and then plan, after all the whole day is gone, the next day. Are we going to need a bus, a van? She organizes them all. And what happens through all this is the girls get to know 
from what Etsy tells them, 